The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. This is the day that the Lord has made. Christ is risen, and through him all creation is made new. Indeed, God shows no partiality. Christ's resurrection truly brings life to everyone. We gather around sacred words and proclaim God's faithfulness, power, and love. With the women at the tomb, we are astonished, elated, and grateful. We depart with joy to proclaim the good news of God's endless love. On this festival day of Easter, I want to thank flutist Anthea Conway White for her prelude. Before the pandemic, Katrina had procured Anthea to be our flute player on Christmas Sunday. When the order came to separate ourselves physically, Anthea was kind enough to send a video to us. And I want to thank Katrina, our Minister of Music, for her postlude. Music is such an important part of our worship and we appreciate the gifts that you share with us. I greet you with the traditional and ancient Easter greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Ah, oh, come on, is that the best you can do? Let's try it again with feeling. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. And a third time, now louder. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. There are times in this world when all the earth seems to come to life. The tender crocus pushes through the crusts of ice and snow. The blades of fresh green grass rise up and sing. The birds dance. Entombed creation springs forth in bold color. Our hearts awash in hope. Yet sometimes life is hard for us to see. 
resurrection hard for us to believe. We wonder who will roll the stone away from our hesitation that yet entombs us. With blinded eyes, we turn away from your life in sadness, confusion, disillusionment, and fear, wondering where you are. Renew us, raise us to new life, to new hope, to new promise in you. When we are all despairing, when the world is full of grief, when we see no way ahead and hope has gone away, God of hope, roll back the stone. Although we fear change, although we are not ready, although we'd rather weep and run away, you are with us, O God, roll back the stone. Because we're seeking with the women, because we hope when hope seems vain, because you call us from the grave and show us the way, God of life, roll back the stone. When we have forgotten, when our heart is sealed like a darkened tomb, God of resurrection, roll back the stone. And teach us to remember, remember what was said. He is not here, he is risen. Jesus is risen from the dead. Let us pray. Living God, with the women who were the first to proclaim the good news, we gather in our many places, in houses, apartments, rooms, in front of computers, to hear once again the words we so long and need to hear, that Jesus is risen just as he said. Resurrect in us the joy of new life in Christ, that chosen by you as witness, we might proclaim your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm so very glad that you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Today's children's message is a poem about hope. It's going to be shown in a video. So if you're not old enough to read, or if you can't read the words in the video quickly enough, please get an older child or an adult to help you. Here's the video. It's time to pray so you can move into your favorite prayer posture, whether that's hands up to receive God's blessing in prayer, uh, whether it's hands folded and eyes closed and heads bowed so that you can concentrate in your praying, or whether it's crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, which is the first letter in Greek for Christ, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for raising Jesus from the dead which shows us that even death is not a barrier to you. Because of Easter, we can have hope. Help our lives always to bear witness to hopefulness in you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 
There are children's bulletins available for you from your parents, and you're welcome to work on them anytime, even as you listen to the sermon. God's final word is always yes. Because God's love is everlasting, God always remains faithful. Ancient Israel is assured that it will be rebuilt and have plentiful crops. The people of God, too, will ultimately be reunited. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call on the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Peter's sermon, delivered at the home of Cornelius, a Roman army officer, is a summary of the essential message of Christianity. Everyone who believes in Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection fulfilled the words of the prophets, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who is God-fearing and does what is right is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Sorrow gives way to fear and great joy when two women are sent by an angel to proclaim the good news, Jesus is risen. St. Matthew writes, 
after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this Easter is certainly not like most Easter's. Easter morning didn't start with Easter breakfast at St. Paul's. The Easter chancel isn't spread with peace lilies. We won't sing seven or so of the usual celebratory Easter hymns, nor will we gather for Easter Sunday communion. Extended families won't meet around the tables laden with food and drink. This Easter is not like most Easter's, but it is perhaps a little more like the first Easter. That first Easter explains presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton from the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. That first Easter, there were no joyful celebrations or churches packed with parishioners. Instead, continues Bishop Eaton, there was fear and anxiety and crushing disappointment. They had seen their hope crucified. They had seen Jesus laid in the tomb. And now, when the women first came to the tomb, they were ready to prepare a body for death, for burial. Nevertheless, even though this Easter is different, we can sing our usual hallelujahs although perhaps tentatively at first, just as the women at the tomb were at first tentative. We can sing our usual hallelujahs because just as God overcame death 2,000 years ago, so too God continues to overcome death and God continues to have a future for us. At Easter, God says to death, and to all the deadly forces we encounter in life, God says, you will not win. At Easter, God declares that when all is said and done, there will be joy. God has brought us into eternal life, life lived in the joy of God's presence now and for all eternity. So Easter is about hope. Hope for God's continued presence. Hope that God will continue bringing life out of death, creating a future where none could have been expected. Easter is about the hope of new life, the hope of new possibilities. Walter Brueggemann is an Old Testament scholar and theologian who is widely considered to be one of the most influential Bible interpreters of our time. He writes that we can have a relentless, uncompromising hope because God will not quit until God has arrived at God's good intention. That holy purpose, continues Brueggemann, is tenacious, steadfast, and relentless that we and all of God's creation will come into well-being. Easter means that faith does not yield to death, says Brueggemann, because faith knows in the deepest ways that the goodness of God will not fold in the face of death, 
concludes Brueggemann. What a great treasure that is, a hope that will not fail us. And like the women at the tomb, the task we are given from the resurrected Christ is to share that hope. Do not be afraid, commands Jesus. And then he adds, go and tell. A first year student in a Catholic seminary was told by the dean that he should plan to preach the sermon in chapel the following day. Now the seminary student had never preached a sermon before, so he was understandably nervous and afraid, and he stayed up all night. But in the morning, he didn't have a sermon. He stood in the pulpit, looked out at his classmates and said, do you know what I'm going to say? All of them shook their heads, no. And he said, neither do I. The service has ended, go in peace. Well, the dean of the seminary was not happy. I'll give you another chance tomorrow, he said, and you had better have a sermon. Again, the young seminary students stayed up all night and again, he couldn't come up with a sermon. So next morning he stood in the pulpit and asked, do you know what I'm going to say? The students all nodded their heads, yes. Then there is no reason to tell you, he said. The service has ended, go in peace. Now the Dean was angry. I'll give you one more chance. And if you don't have a sermon tomorrow, you will be asked to leave the seminary. Again, no sermon came. The stu student stood in the pulpit the next day and asked, do you know what I'm going to say? This time, half of the students nodded yes, and the other half shook their heads no. The student preacher then announced, those who know, tell those who don't know. The service has ended, go in peace. The seminary dean walked over this to the student put his arm around the student's shoulders and said, those who know, tell those who don't know. Today, the gospel has been proclaimed. Tell those who don't know about the great hope we have in Christ Jesus. Because God promises never to leave us, our fear can be replaced with God's hope. For God loves us unconditionally. And not even death can change that. At Easter, God says to death and to all the deadly forces we encounter in life, God says, you will not win. Just as God overcame death 2,000 years ago, so too God continues to overcome death and God continues to have a future for us. So today and every day, is an Easter morning. For because of Easter, every day there is hope. As the angel proclaimed to the women at the tomb, do not be afraid. He has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you. Go quickly and tell. Thanks be to God. Amen. Children, I especially encourage you to join us in these prayers by taking your favorite prayer posture again, and then by repeating, uh, responding to each petition or request. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and a resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need saying God of Easter and responding, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you give the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Open our ears to their proclamation this day and always. 
God of Easter, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Move us to care for those harmed by global climate change. God of Easter, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep, and we mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. In these times of COVID-19, help us to relearn the deep truth that the church is not a building. The church is people. The church is people doing your work of compassion and mercy, of love and social justice, no matter where they do so. And so we thank you for the ministry of the church, such as exhausted healthcare workers on the front lines, boldly living out sacrificial love of strangers. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Gifted public health teams as they watch and help us to navigate the storms of infectious disease. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Courageous first responders and pharmacists placing themselves in harm's way to care for their neighbors as themselves. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Grocery store employees and managers and all in the food chain working tire tire tirelessly to fill ever emptying shelves so that hungry people can have their daily bread. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Heroic teachers feverishly finding creative ways to shepherd well the children in their care, learning new ways of teaching themselves. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Emotionally and physically taxed parents in a swirling storm of worry and terror while striving to remain a calm, steady reminder to their children that they are beloved and need not fear. God of love, hear our prayer. Cleaning personnel wiping down door handles and light switches to reduce the exposure of others to this virus. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Truck drivers, delivery services, and neighbors making sure we have the essentials. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Musicians and artists making online videos for our enjoyment. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Corporations large and small ensuring that wages are paid and governments opening their treasuries to help those whom the corporations were unable to keep. God of Easter, hear our prayer. Neighbors making fabric masks, God of Easter, hear our prayer. And all who are isolating themselves from others to flatten the spread and to protect the most vulnerable. God of Easter, hear our prayer. In culture that is increasingly nationalistic and individualistic, help us to see ever more clearly how the world is one. Disease knows no political boundary. Our suffering interconnects us. We mourn together, we rejoice together, and we succeed together or we fail together. Grant that after the pandemic ends, we continue to become more spiritually grounded, more compassionate, more creative, and that we resolve to live together peacefully and with social justice. God of Easter, hear our prayers. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. God of Easter, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. We share that peace. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.